Steve Ray here. Steve Ray here. We're leaving our hotel this morning. We're on our way with, for a walking tour of some churches. And Liz will tell you our summary of what we're going to do. What? And we're going to enter the city of Rome the way that pilgrims have for about over a thousand years. Before the advent of trains and planes, uh, people used to walk to Rome. It was a big part of pilgrimage, the penance of having to walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. So we're going to start by walking over the bridge. We're going to walk into the Piazza del Popolo that has been welcoming pilgrims for seven It was a beautiful day for walking today, and we are going first to the Piazza de Popolo, the Piazza Plaza of the People. We arrive at the Church of St. Mary of the People, and we go in. There's two magnificent paintings here that we're going to see by Caravaggio, the conversion of St. Paul and the crucifixion of St. Peter. Interestingly, this was the altar where Martin Luther celebrated Mass and prayed while he was here in Rome. Simple cross. But this is where he was when he came to Rome, came through the gates of Popolo, which we just came through, and was all excited to be in Rome. And here's where he celebrated Mass the first time. Here's our group. We just saw the two Caravaggios of the martyrdom of Peter and the conversion of St. Paul which was right in there, by the way, but we couldn't take pictures. In this chapel of St. Lawrence, we have him, St. Lawrence the deacon, being condemned after he brought the poor of the church. Then we see him being cooked on the griddle. They're putting fire underneath, and he's laying on the griddle where they're going to roast him to death. And here he is in glory holding the griddle where he was grilled in his, in his right hand and the remains, the relics of that griddle that he was cooked on or underneath this altar. beautiful column, a monument to the Immaculate Conception and the four prophets around that mentioned a David with a harp. And on the other side, we have Ezekiel, here's Isaiah and Moses, all writing about Mary, the Immaculate Conception. The Church of St. Louis, where a miraculous apparition of Mary helped convert a Jewish businessman named Radisbon. Scott getting a picture of the Trevi Fountain with all the other people. Look at this, it's very crowded. <laughs> we just gave our group 15 minutes to see the fountain and get some coffee, and then we're back on the road. We are entering the Pantheon with the new name of St. Mary of the Martyrs. It's now a church. After our tour of the Pantheon, we cut everybody loose to go find a nice cafe somewhere for a lunch. And believe me, in this part of Rome, there is no shortage of wonderful cafes with delicious Italian food. San Crispino was John Paul II's favorite gelato shop, and Skip and Karen had to give it a try. Inspector. 
We're on our way now to San Stefano Rotundo, St. Stephen in the Round, a round church like a victory temple to remind us of the victory of the martyrs. This church is dedicated to St. Stephen and the martyrs of the first 300 years, and the walls all around are these magnificent full-color paintings of the martyrs suffering various deaths and tortures. I gave my talk here about martyrdom and suffering and how we have to live the Christian life today under such cir and, uh, circumstances as well, which are coming our way. Here's one being buried alive. Cremated even. See they're bringing rocks and they're gonna they're burying him. And then the this is St. Polycarp who prayed while he was burned at the stake and finally killed with a dagger. And it wasn't only men who suffered, women also. Here she's being told to bow to this God and we'll let you go. 55 AD, Polycarp knew St. John the Apostle. Jesus taught St. John by word of mouth. St. John taught Polycarp by word of mouth. No New Testament yet. St. John sat and talked to him. And there was a witness of these two, John being an old man and Polycarp being middle-aged at the time, who was a bishop of Smyrna, which is today Izmir in Turkey. And it says that a man, a young man named Irenaeus, who became also a doctor, a, 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 a father of the church, Irenaeus wrote a letter called Against Heresies. It is a fantastic document. He wrote it just before the end of the second century. And he said, when I was a boy, I used to sit and listen to Polycarp tell of all the stories that he had heard from John the Apostle and all the words of Jesus. He said, I never wrote them down because I remembered them in my mind and in my heart better than if I had seen them on a page. And he said, I still have the words of the Apostles ringing in my ears. Polycarp here was taken to, in, in Smyrna, he was taken and he was chained to this post and they built a fire. And while he was in the fire, he still, you still have, we can read him, the actual prayer that he prayed, that he was being burned to death, but it never burned him. It says that the fire enveloped him like a sail, and it didn't burn him. And they smelled the smell of baking bread, which again is very Eucharistic. And as the fire finally died down, he was still there unburned. And that when they couldn't come up to stab him because the coals were so hot from the fire, they had to wait until the fire cooled down. And then they came up and they killed him with, with a knife. And he then, they burned the rest of him and the Christians took his bones and they collected him and they said they treated his remains, those bones, as more precious than gold and silver and precious stones. And they took them and they kept them in Smyrna. And when we were in Smyrna, I asked the bishop when we were making our movie, I said, do any of those bones remain? He says, come with me. And he took us into the sacristy and he showed us a piece of Polycarp's skull. Oh, wow. That is still oh, there to this day. Wow. And this man who was burned at the stake and then finally killed. And he was 86 years old. And the emperor said, or the governor, I should say, said to him, when he brought him into the arena at night, when they were closing down the arena, and they brought him in last, and the people cheered. They wanted to see one more man die. And the, and the governor said, Polycarp, consider your age. You're 86 years old. Just deny your Christ. You're old, and I'll let you go free. Polycarp's words, 80 and six years have I served my God. He has done me no wrong. How can I deny him now? It was very moving for all of us to have our last Mass here at San Stefano Rotundo in the presence of all of these martyrs where Nero feasted and where St. Gregory the Great preached many homilies. We pray for all who are responsible for the faith. May the Lord continue to bless us and pray for unity of all Christians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Father Peter and for his community. We pray for more vocation to priesthood and to religious life. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord for each and for every one of us.
This is our farewell dinner here at the Restaurante Archaeologica out on the Via Appia Antica out among the catacombs. We're about ready to have our veal which is being prepared there. I'd like to thank you Steve and uh, Jeanette for this is this is wonderful trip. You know, I have to say this is one of the best because when Suzanne she told me, okay Father, what if we make a pilgrimage to Rome with it? So thank you, to, uh, Suzanne. She has been really great, you know, making this possible. So thank you, and all of you. And so. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Janet and I just want to thank you all for trusting us uh, to come on this trip. I know it's a lot of money and a lot of. How do we know it's going to work? What are these two going to do with us? Or, but I'm, I'm glad, thank you for trusting us and for coming with us. We've had a great time. You've been a great group, and we've really had a, an enjoyable time, and I hope you have too. And um, we want to just thank Father Van for his spiritual direction. Thanks, uh, Suzanne, for getting right. this thing all off the ground when she came a year ago and said, can you take us to the Holy Land, I mean to Rome, the second Holy Land? Mm -hmm. And we said, sure. And so thank you, Suzanne, for getting that off the ground and for all of you for trusting us to come. For uh, Tom Govern, who's this, this is number six trip with us. And wow. Michaela, number six trip with us. Now, I know a lot of you haven't been to the Holy Land yet, and we would like to invite you to come with us to the Holy Land. It's very safe. People say, aren't you afraid to go to Israel? I say, no, I'm afraid to go to Detroit. <laughs> I have, Jan that's right, Janet and I have been to the Holy Land over 135 times. We've taken thousands of people. We've never once had a problem. There are people here who can testify to what a wonderful trip it is, so we'd like to invite you to come with us there sometime. And... Um, Thank you all very much. We've had a great time, and we'll, uh, we're will we going to miss all of you. We'll so you'll be back. Okay, well, great. Thank you. So we might as well head back to the bus whenever you're ready. Thank you. You never quit until the pause. Oh, something. Janet wants to say something. I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know, as, as many of you do know already, that I pray for all of our pilgrims every day, and I pray that the Lord will bring the pilgrims that he wants on our trips. So each one of you are handpicked by the Lord to be on this particular trip with these particular people for I don't know what reason, but you've been through a lot of holy doors, so you have a lot of graces that you don't even know about yet. And I expect you to say yes like Mary did because you are full of grace. Right? Thank you. Thank you. That's what she said. Go home and buy the